Our session is about questions and about problems and stories to be told. And uh, this should be fun. We've never done um, this before. The next speaker, unfortunately, is me. <laughs> I'm Dick Zare in the chemistry department. And I do want to make something happen with the video, with the audio, with the uh, PowerPoint. And, and I don't have any monkey stories. I'm in trouble. <laughs> Again, huh? We got something. Let's give it time. Hey, that's good. That's great. Thank you. Thank you, Lincoln. I appreciate that. Um, the story I want to tell you about is something that happened to me on October the 12th, or 14th it was, of uh, this year. Okay? And here I am. And I'm actually in Delhi, India, and I'm with a group of, of students because I've been asked to get involved in trying to talk to a bunch of students about the joys of going into science, one sort or another, or the science, mathematics, engineering, technology, that type of thing. And uh, I came across a young lady, uh, Natika. I'm not going to pronounce the rest of it because I'll make a mess of it, OK? And Natika was talking about how she's interested. Do I say it wrong? No. OK. Natika was, was saying how she really wanted to know what the challenges were, what research was like. And like Pat, I was explaining to her that in, in some sense, what you really want to do is after you, 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 go, to, you go to school, and people set problems for you all the time. And you, 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 some of you have facility. These people had facility, or they wouldn't have been selected for this program to meet with us, it's like a, a camp. Uh, and I said, the real power comes from making up your own questions. That's, that's really exciting, I said, and, and it, researching them. And she says, well, what's an example? What's an example? So I thought of something that I'd sort of been puzzling about, and I, I wanted to share it with you. And the question I asked was, suppose you had a circle. OK, let's try to draw a circle. Okay, And I said, suppose you put charges that are confined to the circle. And the first charge, I said, is fixed to the boundary. Actually, if it's not fixed, you just move in the frame of the first charge. If it moves around, then everything's the same. So here we go. We make one positive charge here. OK? Maybe this will work. I'll, I'll switch colors. OK, so one positive charge here. And I said, where do the charges go if you keep adding charges to the circle? And I said, I bet at some point a, a charge hops into the middle. That's what I said to her. And I, I said, go ahead and compute it and figure it out. See if you can. Assume that you have Coulomb's law. Now, Coulomb's law is that the force goes as 1 over the distance squared, or the energy goes over 1 over the distance. And I said, um, where will the charges go? Suppose you had two charges. So where will the second charge go, the lowest energy? And um, Lou, where are you? <laughs> can't find. No, no, positive, all positive. So, so the opposite side, right. So this would be where it'd go up here, right? And if we have three charges, everybody? It'd be, it'd be a triangle, you know, an equilateral triangle, right? And you can do four. And, and so forth. And I wanted to show you, and now I have about 60 slides to show you, and I'll try to be quick about this. <laughs> so I hope you can see that. That's actually five, and that's forming a, a pentagon. OK, do you see what I, or should we dim the lights? Is it OK? Good? OK. And, and then here comes six, and here comes seven, and here comes eight, and here comes nine, and 10, and 11. And then look what? At 12. One jumps in the middle. Neat. It really does. Hmm? And it really does. And then we, we go on, OK? And the notation is that n equals 12, that's the number of charges. n naught's the number in the outermost uh, ring, OK, or on the periphery. And then n1, you see there's one of them. And then there's no n2, of course, right now. So we go on, OK? Thir 12, 13, 14. 15, 16, look, it's, look what happens. At, at n equals 17, now we get 2. 
that goes away from the center. And let's continue this. Three, four, five, six. Interesting. Look, we've gotten one to go back into the center again, right? And, and uh, th these, are, these are actually her calculations. I wrote a computer program to try to get to this. And I've checked some of this. This is right. And now we got, look at this, three rings. And let's go on. I mean, you know, once we get going. I told you I had 60 slides, so we're going <laughs> to, right? And, and pretty soon, you see where we are now? Yeah, it's very, very interesting is what I thought. And so the question is, can you make a generalization? And I said to myself, you know, this is really looking good. Uh, because it turns out you can work out, that's some work, and, and I'm not going to bother to show you it. Uh, for a circle of capital radius R, okay, and the limit is the number of charges N goes to infinity, okay, you have a charge distribution, you have a charge density, and I'll call that rho of R. And rho of R is proportional to some constant involving the interactions of the charges, okay, uh, and whatever other units you use to make things come out and the units you're working in, uh, divided by 2 pi r, the square root of r squared minus little r squared. Little r squared is where you are in the circle, or the radius from the center. And so we see, if you look at this expression, that the charges uh, pile up at the periphery. In fact, there's a singularity there, actually. Uh, go to infinity classically. What else about this, this density? Uh, that it's also radially symmetric, just as we'd seen. So, of course, I then, you know, was led very much into the generalization that what we're seeing for finite charges would be, uh, what? Concentric shells, right? Right? Sounds good. And so I thought, you know, I know what's going on. And then, of course, my lab manager, David Leahy, said, you know, this problem you're talking about, it may be original to you, but I think I've heard of it before. And so he then used Google, a tremendous search tool, <laughs> which I had. And it turned out the problem had actually been posed in 1985. And there's a, a rich literature on this problem involving such people as Michael Atia, who's the president of the Royal Society and a great mathematician, and other people, and I, I want to show you one of the results. This is result just shocked me. This is the result for n equals 185. And n equals 185 is special. It's the first instance where if you look at it, let's, let's examine this, and I need my pointer. Ouch, ouch. And this is, this is really the minimum energy. Ouch. Because it's not lying on concentric circles like I thought at all. We know in the limit it goes to that, and it starts out. I showed you for the first, what did I show you, the first 40 or 50 charges? I forget how many I showed you already. It is, but it's not true. For n equals 185, which I didn't have the patience to calculate, nor did she, <laughs> right? It, it breaks symmetry, and that amazes me, that it actually breaks, it's a symmetry breaking. Here we have a radial problem. Let me explain what I mean. The potential for a charge is one over r. That, to me, is the same as you go around it. And the circle is like a circle, right? <laughs> and well, wow, wow, we've seen them even go to the center, so just putting one in the center won't change the nature of the problem either. No, no. No, the, 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 one over the, the one at the very center is in the center, yes, but, but, but you notice it's off. It's off, and it's really so. And uh, what's the conclusion from this that I've been learning, uh, which I want to share with you? Well, not only humility, okay, but truth is a great flirt. <laughs> and uh, so there's great fun solving problems and looking at things, and it starts to show you you might say, what is this all about? Is it math? Is it physics? Is it chemistry? You're supposed to be, after all, supposed to be in the chemistry department, right? right? And uh, well, it turns out there are problems involving clusters of atoms. 
And how you go from one atom of gold to the metal bar gold through clusters of gold, and we see all types of strange chemical behavior with clusters, and we're beginning to get an idea from problems like this how such things can come about. These so-called many body problems are really hard. To, to say a little more, if I, if I haven't used up all my time, uh, interestingly, the circle is a bit pathological because it, you can show your, you can prove uh, and see me later that if you generalize the problem to a sphere, no point ever jumps in the center. They all stay on the periphery all the time. Fascinating, huh? Really fascinating. And uh, so there's still even what looks like easy problems that you, you make up, et cetera. There's lessons to be learned from it. So I'm still having great fun with this. And that's enough of this. Thanks so much. <laughs>